All right, so we just watched Lethal Weapon. Your first time watching it, right? Yeah, I think I've seen a few clips on TV, but I don't think I've seen the full thing. It's the one that really popularized the uh, Buddy Cop film, even though it wasn't the first one. Die Hard did come out almost immediately after, and we kind of said when we reviewed that, that that was a, a long distance Buddy Cop film. <laughs> yeah, um, over the phone. Yeah, over the phone, you know. <laughs> and this does theme, uh, feel very similar in many ways. It's the sort of crazy white guy and the, the I won't say mild-mannered, but certainly the, the upstanding black cop working together solving the case yeah the complete opposites that come together and, and solve the problem the grand valley saved my life took a bayonet in the lungs oh that was right nice yeah i thought so i really like the emotional center of the film with the characters which is obviously not the thing most people care about in, in these action, action films flick? oh i don't know right i i feel like uh, it, to, to pull in a completely different film um Remember in Hot Fuzz, where the, the, the buddy cops, you know, getting buddy buddy was watching these kinds of action flicks, right? Yeah. I feel, I think that kind of speaks to how, just like we're doing right now, a lot of the emotional value of these kinds of feel-good movies or just popcorn, popcorn chucking movies is hanging out. Yeah, that's definitely true. And also, it's probably true for people who don't have control in their lives, generally speaking, that it's nice to have something work out in this way. There's a family man who has something oh, bad right, happen right. to his family, and uh, he so, so, does something about it. Yeah. it. It's an uplifting story to see someone do that. Is what you're yeah, exactly. Not not the not the sort of Greek tragedy catharsis version of like, oh yeah violence inflicted for me. Uh, How no. can I do that? <laughs> no. Although the the reason why also why I was surprised that this movie came first is. It felt a lot more cynical. And uh, yes. to be fair, that sort of order, you know, the earlier version of a, you know, a trope movie being more cynical and grounded is, is not somehow unusual. I, I had thought when I was watching Die Hard with you that the sort of economic commentary was, you know, gentle but chiding. You know, we're in a time of plenty, but, you know, you know. We, we got to make sure to to keep an eye on the moral values, on, on what we really value emotionally, things like that. Yeah. And here we have something, I, I felt a lot more cynical than that, where it's not thieves uh, pretending to be uh, noble, but stealing from a corporation. It's it's really just a, a corporation straight up being criminal and being a front for, for criminals. We have this very down and dirty look at the streets and there's not as much of a... I don't know if uplifting is the right word, but certainly a, a very positive outlook on the middle class. It certainly like holds up middle class life as the ideal, yeah. but it, it seems a lot less optimistic about I, that ideal. Let's see what's for dinner. Uh, this is the brown stick. Ouch! It's rough. A uh, house of brown roast like substance. And that might come down to the writer. He's this extremely cynical man and always has been. In fact, the director had to bring somebody else in to help lighten the script up a bit because it used to be much darker. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, and, and actually, something I realized is that my favorite scene was only in the director's cut. And that's the one I'd seen before this, so this is the, the normal, regular version. You want, um, you want to explain that scene? Yeah, the scene in, in question is there's a sniper at a school, shot a kid, and he's just shooting kind of randomly. Riggs shows up and asks, oh, how old is that kid? And then he goes up and is calculating and everything. He's like, don't go up there. Uh, he's gonna, he's, you know, he's crazy. You're in the line of fire. And he's like, uh, he just keeps walking and the guy misses because he sucks at shooting. And then... He says, oh, what, you only shoot kids? And the guy pulls out his gun and starts shooting at him, like, leave me alone. And then he shoots him nine times, one for each year of his life. And I thought that was a much better introduction to him than the Christmas tree lot scene, possibly. Yeah, that but makes I sense. Also could see, I can also see why they would have cut that, because it would be a little redundant to have both those scenes communicating the same thing. And right. maybe, and as much as I like it as a, as a person who loves action and character work, maybe having kids be shot on Says, <laughs> the opening scene. And that, be, that's not aged well, certainly. Yeah, not be great for the uh, theater-going experience that most people want. Right. So. It, it, would, it would put a sort of unrecoverable dour mood over the whole film. Yeah, yeah. Still, um, great sequence. I can see why they cut it, but I also wish they hadn't. Not going into too many more scenes right now, but there were some 
details that we noticed in the score that I wanted to bring up because whenever Riggs is there, there's this great uh, guitar riff that happens. And whenever, whenever Murtaugh is there, there's this saxophone that comes into the score. And when they're both together, they work together. It's very simple. It's not a complicated score, but it's great because it does exactly what you want it to. <laughs> And that's, that's right. That's something that needs to be done more often in movie scores. I think is to have an instrument or something that is that's associated with one character in particular. You, you mean a light motif? A light motif, yes. Well, yeah, you know, but I, I think <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, is that uh, joke society, right? Um, but what I'm trying to say is, right, if there's like one of you know, if we're gonna put like a moto on a T-shirt or something uh, for this sh- for this segment, one of them could be. It doesn't have to be complex as long as it's something. You know? Yeah. Exactly. I as long as it works, like yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. As long as it works, that's something to be said about a lot of the a lot of the scenes in this film, uh, and a lot of the character motivation, everything. It's all right. simple, but it works very well. And there's a there's a beginning, middle, and end for everybody. Right. It's efficient. It's tight. Things that are brought up are usually you know, returned to by the end of the film. Right. There's a setup and there's a payoff. You know, if there's anything frustrating about a film it's to set something up and not come back to it and that's yeah. the very definition of disappointment yeah i guess the best example of setting it up was with the hollow point bullet from the beginning when it comes back at the end you're like oh yeah there that's that's that plot line closed up that's okay. uh that's it. nice and done give this to your dad okay uh it's a present for him tell him i won't be needing it anymore it's a bullet yeah it's a bullet <laughs> i spent about half our viewing time saying when the bullet's coming back, though, it's gonna shoot the baddie or something. Chekhov's bullet. <laughs> but see, you know, there's nothing wrong with this kind of predictability. Oh. And, and I, I, I would, predictability is the wrong word because I didn't even predict it quite right. It was just not a disappointment, right? It was, it was brought back. It was relevant. There's a reason why it was introduced. And you know, that's good editing. That's good story writing. It may be more editing than story writing, just removing things that aren't cashed out. And if you don't have that, what you have is a disappointment. Yeah, exactly. And that's something to be said about action films from this time over ones from today, is that because of the restrictions that film placed on the production crew, they had to be more concise and they had to plan things out and cut it down. Whereas modern films have unlimited resources and waste them somehow. <laughs> somehow, yeah. You know, TV shows, right? You know, you get a Netflix series, like you, you want to... How long do you want to milk this? It's like, well, we're never actually going to get anything out of it. That's the plan. Yeah, I, I, exactly. and I, 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 I'm sort of casting a broad net here. You know, sort of nodding at a genre I don't really watch. So, yeah. But, but I mean, that is a complaining to other people. Yeah. It's very true of a lot of modern storytelling is they have that mystery box set up. We're like, oh, what's inside the box? You got to open it. And then they never pay it off. And that's a Is big it problem. they or J.J. Abrams? Yeah, Joel, J.J. Abrams in particular has a terrible habit of this. Um, okay. But people well, still keep going, so it's whatever, I guess. Let, let's, he must be let, a really nice guy to work with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's focus, though. Let's focus, yeah, uh, focus on, on the film, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we already brought up the Die Hard parallel, not just because we reviewed Die Hard before, but it, it really does feel, you know, it's from the same time period. It's the same genre. Lots of parallel, uh, a lot of parallels to be drawn. The bad guys, too, I noticed, were had this weirdly European feel, like they're the Doctor Strange love-looking weirdos on on the team he has a grenade he's bluffing he wouldn't risk killing his own daughter yeah, even though they were cia like ex-military kind of guys speaking of cia the the, the alphabet agency is also the the baddies in die hard as well i mean not not yeah. technically listed under bad guys but they, they're, they're bad guys. <laughs> which it's a nice bit it's a nice bit of you know, moral agreement. It's like at the end of the day, we can all agree that no matter who you are, the government agencies are up to no good. Yeah, exactly. Every uh, single one of them. <laughs> uh, so, you no, know, the character dynamic is great. Uh, it, it's nice. Obviously, that's what you want from a buddy cop movie: is to have a right. great, quippy dialogue between the two people, or some sort of connection or motivation that keeps them going but mm-hmm. here it really does it well uh, and which is why obviously the genre picked up that um it, another aspect in which it feels like die hard is is a sort of sanitized redoing of this this kind of film is 
the honestly the, the sort of messaging of it mm. i wouldn't go so far to say is that the, the story is replete with political messaging or or anything like that but there, there certainly were a few nods to sort of the issues which felt a, a bit more apparent in this film than in die hard I, I feel like die hard is much more let's try to feel good and this one is more like i don't know let's feel a little bit on edge because people are dealing with issues and there are issues in the world we'll we'll, we'll briefly glance on these issues yeah, it's observational, I think. Yeah. It's more descriptive I don't think, right. than anything else. I don't I don't think it's bad or anything. I don't think it no. gets in the way of the story. I didn't think it was disruptive. I just noticed it sort of out of the part of the eye. Yeah, I think it's because Die Hard is up in the skyscraper and, uh, and this one's more ground level. There is there's a reason why this is popping up a lot more. It does feel deliberate. It doesn't feel disruptive. Just something to notice. No. I guess a good example of that would be the kids who not wanting to talk to the cops. Right. <laughs> My name is Detective Murtaugh. What's yours? Don't tell him your name. Don't tell me your name was gonna put you in jail. And you won't see your mom. No, no, no. It's all right. I'm not gonna put you in jail. That's just like, yeah, that's the thing. That would be true. That, that's how that would work. And, and perhaps compared to today, it feels almost more open about it, but also more, I won't say naive, but certainly more optimistic. So uh, that's just I, interesting comparison between what a modern film would do yeah. and what this one does. I, I, I almost want to say that today in films, you know, a black father being a, a policeman, not so unquestionably good or it's more of a cause of conflict than as a sort of a sign of his uh, stalled position in the community like uh, uh, the example that comes to mind the, the spider-man movie yeah right so where miles dad is is a policeman obviously like he's not painted to be a bad man at all the, you know he is very much this upstanding member of the community you know that is a source of conflict in a very different way than it would be in a movie like this yeah, i would agree it, it's just interesting to to view that sort of as an outside observer and separate it from the way films would, would look at it today it felt in some ways it felt more natural in others it's a little goofy right um, uh there's there there are some nice bits i think where i don't know if nice bits is the right way to put it there there are there are ways of portraying the characters sympathetically where it was shown that they're sympathetic towards the people they're working with you know it's like I, i'm not here to arrest you right I, i'm just I'm trying to solve a, an unrelated case. Can you help me at all? And not just the kids, but also the, the hooker. And I feel like there's a few other scenes like that, right? But it, there's definitely sort of, you know, we're, we're, we're cool with we're cool with the messiness of life. Yeah, there's actually, there's a sense of uh, social cohesion, I'd say, more so at the time. But yeah, anyway, we don't, I guess, I guess that's just something to point out. It's, it's nice to see in some ways and a little silly in other ways. It's like, oh, it's a little naive, but not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a thing. The ending was a little silly. I think we both. The both ending felt, felt like, yeah, <laughs> a little, a little chaotic, but it was, it, it made a certain kind of narrative sense, right? Yeah. It was there for story structures per the sake, I yeah. think. And I, I, I think it did that a lot less of, you know, I, I won't say obtrusively, but uh, it, it it didn't feel quite as wrong as say the rooftop scene in Die Hard. That felt you know we could understand the the logic behind putting that there, but it just didn't quite work for various reasons. This one also feels weird, but from a narrative or a character logic point of view, it made a decent amount of sense, even if it was sort of an absurd situation. It led to a great conclusion as well, so I'm completely fine with it. Like as as you said, this is a film we're not. It's it's not the best thing in the entire world, but it it's very serviceable as an action film, and it's probably a step above a lot of them because there's a lot more thought put into character work. Into I mean, the action was pretty great too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some unique sequences. Yeah, there's some good sequences. You know, <laughs> a lot of the bits, you know, they're almost funny, but yeah. they certainly are visually striking. Like when he's running, you know, he's booking down the street with the gun, right? You know bare-chested with his, his shirt open, just spoken it. The pool scene, right? That's a very memorable one. Oops. You haven't met anybody you didn't kill? Yeah. I think everybody remembers the pool scene. The desert sequence, of course. I felt like that was pretty unique. I mean, obviously there's tons of scenes where there's a prisoner exchange, but setting it in a, a dried up lake like that, where there's not a lot of cover is an interesting choice. And visually it added some flair to it that wouldn't have been there otherwise. Right, yeah. And, and a lot of the hamminess yeah, sort of has a sort of smartness to it. Like it, it makes sense as a sort of almost cartoonish characterization of real characters. And that's where absurdity should exist. Yeah, at least, you know, in, in my humble opinion, that's, that's one place where it works very well. 
But yeah, the, you know, that, that's what a reviewer is supposed to do, is it show our opinions. So <laughs> that works. I, I liked it, is what I'm saying. I liked it. Yeah. One little piece of trivia, actually, related to reviewers, is this film didn't do particularly well initially because of poor marketing and the timing of the release. And then Roger Ebert reviewed it and raved about it, and then everybody went and saw it, and it stuck around. There you go. Oh, so Ebert, okay, he likes it. Uh, there you go. I like it too. <laughs> yeah, that's how it worked. We had to have yeah. the same opinion. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly how it works. We, our our um, integrity as viewer, reviewers are entirely uh, is entirely subjugated. Uh, yes, uh, I have to wait until Red Letter Media watches the movie before I have an opinion on it too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to be very brave and watch something that that is just actually we've out. watched a ton of things that i was joking we've watched a ton of things yeah. that they uh, have never touched <laughs> yeah, we're watching some weird weird no that's the wrong word we're watching some iconic but antiquated films yes films films nobody cares about some of them but that's fine <laughs> we and at least one it. film we hope nobody will ever care about yeah ever again that was ever the most again. attention i'll ever get well we're, right. we're drifting off point so, so uh, Short that, review. Yeah. Great action movie. Um, well deserved, deserving of its reputation. Right. I would watch the director's cut because I think the opening sequence is a little bit better in that one. Overall, it, it has the virtues of a good popcorn flicking film, which is that uh, there's no distracting elements of misshapen plot. It's just good action. You know, nothing to draw you out of it. Uh, it feels good. You like the characters. Basically, it's just smart enough not to mess up. <laughs> Exactly. It knows There's, what it's doing and it does it well. I don't want to understate how, how uh, quippy and well written the dialogue is. Yeah, it really is funny. Yeah, so it's it's well worth it in that. If you want just a casual thing you can watch over the weekend, definitely check it out. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you don't need that recommendation, but you know, there's a baby you can go into watching it with a few more things to look at and some ideas to consider. And maybe it'll be a new experience. Who knows? Thanks for watching. Stay yeah, thank you for watching. Stay copacetic. I'm too old for this.